smooth surface. This'll do. The rock warmed to match the temperature of the fury boiling in my veins. Picking my target, I gritted my teeth and I set my jaw. I gripped the rock close to my ear and I stepped forward and I hurled it with every ounce of strength of raw emotion that was housed inside of my soul. Suddenly, the world skidded into slow motion. The high-pitched sound came first, probably because I had squeezed my eyelids so tightly shut to muster all of my strength and focus. I opened my eyes wide to watch the old farmhouse window coming down. It came in shards, multiple pieces broke at the point of impact. <laughs> the sunlight glinted off every beautiful facet, and I was delighted and quite proud of my grand spectacle, infused with the energy of the rhapsody I created until my family ran out, shouting, what happened? <clears throat> oh dear, what had I done? The wreckage gave witness to my wrath, and right where I stood, the Colorado sun shone like a stage spotlight <clears throat> with me as its focus. <sighs> with her mouth agape, hands open in, in surrender, or perhaps as if she could stop that last dangling piece from hitting the ground, my mother looked at me with daggers in her eyes as she spoke. Suddenly, my rage became fear. It was a naughty thing, and I knew it. I knew I'd be in trouble, but I don't think I cared that day. <clears throat> because that day, I exercised some of my tiny power as a five or six-year-old, while hoping to possibly exorcise some demons terrorizing my young mind. This proved so exhilarating that in every house after that, broken windows kicked in doors, and walls riddled with punch holes stood as witness to my anger. The fury raging inside of that little me built over time because I lacked positive methods for venting those big emotions. As a child, helpless to act against those who hurt me, and the anger grew with me through my adolescence into womanhood and awkwardly tumbled out sideways at truly the most inopportune times in ever-increasing in shameful ways. Rocks through windows were the best way that I could cope as a child, but later self-doubt, self-hate, sabotaging behaviors, people pleasing, all sorts of eating disorders, drinking, acting out, risk-taking behavior, they all became coping mechanisms that I used in my struggle. Oh yes, and rugby. <coughs> rugby. As a sport where I literally got tackled on the field in college and relished my chance to finally hit Physically, I was painfully broken or massively bruised after every game. But that's my thing, it just remained the same. I would somehow always seem to pay the price. And I ask myself now, why windows? Why windows? I believe a deeper meaning hides and layers behind the glass because glass is delicate and strong at the same time. Windows keep out the rain and the snow. They stand up to all kinds of wind and weather, but they shatter when they're hit at just the right spot. Pyrex glass withstands freezing and microwaving, but put it over an open flame and it cracks and it breaks. You can heat or cool tempered glass bowls, but even they shatter with any extreme temperature change. Have you ever dropped a wine glass? It's shattering makes it crazy crazy mess. And even after you thoroughly clean, sweep, and mop, you find broken pieces everywhere in unexpected places. Shattering a child with trauma is the same. Sometimes the safest place to find, to face the challenging subjects is between the covers of a book. Within these pages and within our story time today, um, I'm going to talk to you about some real honest story of a believer who's been as close as she could get to hell and has come back out of it. And I'm no expert, just so you all know, I'm no expert on mental health. I am not a therapist. I am not a clinician. I do not have a degree, but I do have the experiences of going through some pretty horrific things that you might relate to with trauma. 
This is simply a testimony of a trauma traveler on a journey into God's love and mercy from struggling with mental health to being spiritually and emotionally healthier. And so I've been so broken, y'all, that only Jesus could fix me, but I also had all sorts of professional help. And that's what I want you to know today is that number one, whatever you have walked through, you're not alone. You're not alone. Others have walked through the same kinds of things, not exactly, but they understand. You're not alone and there's hope because there's help. You look around you, I look around you right now and I go, oh, you have help. You have people who love you. You have people who have dedicated their entire life to supporting you. And right now for this short amount of time that I have with you, I'm just trying to be the person that I needed when I was sitting in your chair. That's it. I just needed somebody who would come and talk to me and who would understand and who would give me hope. And so I hope today that this provides you.